Okay, we're back and we're doing some mechanics here and we're doing a little bit more with gravity. These are just kind of some fun things to think about. Um, some special cases of uh, gravity and Gauss's law. Uh, Gauss's law is that thing that says um, if, if you have flux, that is if you have a, a field which is radiating from a mass, in this case a gravitational field, uh, what it really depends on is how much mass you have. And in particular, at a, at a given radius, okay, a given distance from the center of the object, uh, it depends on how much mass you have inside of the region that you're looking at, inside of that radius. So one kind of interesting thing is, what if the Earth happened to be hollow? What if the Earth were like a hollow shell of matter? Um, well, you'd have the same mass of the Earth, you'd have the same radius of the Earth, and so if you're on the surface of the Earth, um, here's a case on, on this picture over here on the right, whatever the radius of the Earth is, and if you had the same mass of the Earth, then Newton's law of gravity would say that you weigh the same if you're standing on the Earth. Okay, no big deal. Nothing new. Now the trouble is, if it's hollow, such that if, if you see this little red dashed line in here, if there's no mass inside of there, uh, what Gauss's law tells us is that uh, there would be no gravity. <laughs> so the cool thing about this is you would be literally weightless. You would just float inside a hollow earth. You would have weight on the surface of the earth, but if you drilled a hole through the, that surface and jumped in, you would suddenly be weightless and just float around inside this big old hollow ball. Okay, so that's a direct consequence of, of Gauss's law. Now, of course, uh, that's not the case. The Earth really is solid. And so if you were to drill inside and go into a mine shaft or something, you, you still have weight. Okay, there, there's still mass underneath you, okay, in, inside that radius of the Earth. So there's an interesting problem that people have thought about uh, over, you know, last couple centuries, I guess. If you could drill a tunnel all the way through the Earth, uh, what would happen if you jumped in? Okay, so that's... Our problem is to figure out what, what sort of motion would you run into. Now, the assumption that we're going to make is that the Earth has a uniform or a constant density. Okay, and a, a, a common symbol for density is the Greek letter rho. Well, here's Gauss's law, very generically, saying that uh, the gravitational field, little g, okay, which is really the acceleration of gravity, times the surface area, okay, um, we'll define that in a second, is equal to some constants times the mass inside of that surface area. Okay, so uh, the mass inside some area, since density, by definition, is how much mass do you have per unit volume? If you want to solve for mass there, it's density times volume. So here's our picture of a solid Earth. There's a little tunnel running through it. And that dashed line, that dashed blue line with little r, is uh, what we call a Gaussian surface. Okay, that, that's the radius, that's the this little imaginary sphere that we're considering to define our surface area. So Gauss's law, if we substitute some stuff in, we're now saying that the gravitational field, now the surface area of that sphere is 4 pi little r squared. <coughs> Over on the right hand side we've got uh, some constants. There's our gravitational constant, a vector of 4 pi. It's negative because gravity is attractive. Negative forces are attractive forces times the mass inside. This is where we're going to substitute in the density of the Earth times the volume <coughs> of a region inside the Earth. 4 thirds pi little r cubed. Okay, now don't confuse the little r with big R. Big R would be the full radius of the entire Earth, all the way out to the surface. Remember, we're, we're considering what happens if you're inside the Earth. That's why we have the little r. Well, look what happens. The, the factor of 4 pi drops out. Uh, a factor of little r squared drops out. 
And so now if we solve for the acceleration of gravity, okay, the gravitational field, we have some constants. Um, we have a, what, a 4 pi big G times density. But the important part here is there's a little r left over. And I guess the only thing we have in our denominator is a factor of 3. <coughs> okay. So the constants are all that important. Um, the important point here is here's a case where your, your gravity is proportional, linearly proportional to how far you are from the center. Okay, so it, it's, it's linear with distance. So if you jump in, imagine what happens. Um, at first, you know, gravity's pulling you towards the center, and so you're, you're going to be moving really fast towards the center of the Earth. Now you're moving, because you're moving so fast, not like you're just going to stop at the center of the Earth, but instead you're going to go past it, because you have that momentum, uh, but as you move outward, the force of gravity, let me draw that in black, it's acting like a brake. It's trying to slow you down. Okay, so uh, that means you're gonna, it's going to stop you by the time you get to the other side of this tunnel, and it's going to pull you back in. Okay, so I can rewrite this. Consider all these constants right here. That's just some number. Okay. So your, your gravitational field goes as negative k times r. That looks a lot like a spring. Remember, the, the force equation for a spring is negative constant times displacement. Okay. This is simple harmonic motion. It would be like you're attached to a spring. You are going to oscillate back and forth through the center of the Earth. Okay. It's, it's really weird. <laughs> um, and in fact, uh, the, the frequency is related to these constants right here. Uh, this basically is, is going to be an angular frequency. It's going to be the square root of that number. Okay. Um, so we, we could actually do a couple things here. You could figure the frequency. It's going to be 1 over 2 pi times the square root. Um, you could also figure out the time, the, the period it would take you to go back and forth through the Earth. Uh, I'll just write it down so you can kind of get a sense of what that would look like. Uh, you have a factor of 2 pi and then the square root. And it's invert everything here. Okay, so it's really weird. Um, <laughs> you have simple harmonic motion. You'd be flying back and forth uh, as if you're on a spring passing through the Earth. Um, you can figure out your frequency. You could figure out your period as you're going through this thing. Your position, velocity, and acceleration would, would go as, um, as a sine or cosine. Okay, so if, for example, your, your position might be uh, some number times the cosine as a function of time. So it's it, it's all really weird stuff, um, but, but really cool, fun to think about. Okay, so if the Earth is solid, which it is, it is if it had a uniform density, you'd uh, follow the rules of simple harmonic motion. If the Earth were hollow, you would jump inside the Earth and just float. Okay, you'd be weightless. You just uh, There'd be no gravity inside a hollow Earth. So again, these are two pretty fun cases. Uh, these are consequences of Gauss's law, and uh, I hope you know you have some fun thinking about it. Until next time, we'll see you later.